I experience sadness in a state that I never have, uh, cruelty in, in a depth that I never seen in my life. But you will not leave a similar person anymore. You will leave as broken, physically broken, psychologically broken wretches. You wouldn't even dream of it or feel it unless you really subjected to it. I could tell you, you know, just imagine yourself sleeping under light, glaring light for six years. What will that do to you? You could imagine it, but you will not really feel how breaking it is to the mind unless you live underneath that kind of system. When you have a hole like that and then you have an AC which is in full blow of air, cold air coming out into it, you're living inside the fridge. You're locked up. I used to remember, you know, I worked in Burger King's when I was a student for, for studies and stuff. I used to remember walking into Burger King's fridge to get stuff out. It was like that. And they had a system after system. It was continuous. It was like you never had resting in time for six years. And we were very young, we were about 10, 11, 9, 8, and 6, and so on. And my, father, my mother was very frightened, so she decided she must leave the country with all of us. Well, I enjoyed the freedom that we had here, is that uh, you did many things without being questioned. I started studying law because I wanted to help others, because of the problems that we were faced as young boys without a father trying to do human rights and try to stop wrongdoings happening from to other families and other children. I went to Saudi Arabia to do a Hajj and Umrah pilgrimage, Islamic pilgrimage, with my mother. When I was there, I wanted to see the law system and I went to courts in Mecca. And it's the same thing, I did the same thing when I went to Afghanistan. I, I, I met a young lady and I married her and uh, I enjoyed life in, in Afghanistan. And then this September 11 happened. So I felt uh, feared for the safety of my family. So I had to move them out from Afghanistan to Pakistan and then from Pakistan try to get them back to here, to England. Our house was surrounded by many, many, many police. People wearing tracksuits, black tracksuits, holding guns. They surrounded our villa. They jumped inside the house. And you can imagine the screams and the cries of my wife. They had elastics, goggles were really, really tight. You can see the blood was, you can feel your head blowing up because of the blood was holding, holding back between this area to this area. And um, you had no senses, your nose was covered, your ears were covered, they were very uncomfortable, your hands were like that, and sometimes they drown you with water. This is the closest we came to waterboarding. Is they, they, they do water where you suffocate, they put lots of water until you scream. They spray you with something that makes you really burn everywhere, your face, everything. And they'd be laughing, sometimes they'd pass and hit you with the electric gun if they wanted, sometimes, and they laugh about that. People were sodomized in Saigon Tamil people. I know the people who that happened to them. Some of them with, uh, with uh, sticks of broomsticks, sometimes hands, things like that, just to humiliate and break people there. We were never legally accused of anything. We were subjected to all sorts of barbarian kind of treatment, humiliation, disgrace. Uh, torture and so on, and we were never we were released without any charges, without anything, no apologies, nothing. No, that, that doesn't mean that I held grudge against every American. No, I want the people themselves, the humans in America, the good people which I met many of, to realize how in their names those ugly people have done to others.